<laughs> oh, welcome. Didn't see you there. So today we are unboxing the lamest pun uh, I've ever received in a box. This is the Mill 1 V2 Desktop CNC Mill. It's uh, you, you basically you plop in this one-handed uh, Makita router and it mills out stuff um, from whatever material you want it to mill from, I, I guess. Um, like, you're not going to do hardened steel, but aluminum should be fine um but this thing is spelled cnc s-i-e-n-c-i uh, i always thought that these guys were like italian Sicil sicilian uh something and just you know wanted to bring that italian noun if, if it actually meant anything um you know wanted to use that, that noun but as it turns out i actually watched the video the interview of um joel the 3d printing nerd from what was it? Maker Fair or something? And it's supposed to be just pronounced CNC, like the, the uh, what is it? Computer numerical control, CNC. CNC is supposed to be pronounced CNC. So, yeah, we're unboxing the CNC Mill 1. I, I, I can't see how that would cause any issues. Like, if you're saying, hey, I want the CNC Mill. Like, which one do you want? Do you want the, this CNC mill or do you want the CNC mill? Again, that is why I mispronounced Slicer. Slick Theor. So, yeah. Let's just check it out. So, it's it's actually two different things. So, this is um, the mill, the, the body, the mechanics, the motion platform, basically. Um, you don't get it with a tool head. So, this thing is just a three-axis motion system somehow. So... Um, you could slap a 3D printing head on this. It would 3D print. You can slap a one-hand router on it. It's going to route out things. It's going to mill things. So, um, yeah, this is this is the base. And then you add this guy onto it. Um, so, price-wise, you have it in the title. $3.99 for the mill kit. And um, it's like a, another 100 bucks for the, for the tool head. Ah! Wait, is this... I'm hoping that is... Yeah, that is two boxes um, with different stuff in it. It's not two kits, I'm thinking. I'm hoping. We're gonna find out. Yeah, these are two different packages, definitely. So, nothing else in here. Got everything out. Makitas are cool. Yeah, so far I only had good experiences with uh makita tools i i don't know if, if you guys pronounce it differently but yeah been very happy with with the tools so far that's why i went for this one you could get like a cheaper version um of like this one-handed router this is actually just a you know a, a one-handed trim router basically uh there are different options i wanted one that was good that didn't have any play in it i think makita is going to deliver on that front Oh, look, that the box sort of lines up with a B-cam. Um, yeah, so I went for this. This actually goes to 30,000 RPM, which is quite a bit. Um, that is quite a bit much, or quite a bit, bit much. <laughs> shit. Uh, now ready, PG-13. Um, this is actually quite a bit more than uh, what your, you know, cordless drills or uh or even regular drills do etc etc so yeah great for using uh small diameter uh milling bits you need a lot of rpm um to get the, these small mill bits to work so hello there congratulations on receiving your cnc mill one the video and instructions on assembly along with additional resources for your CNC Mill 1 can be found on our website. So I think that's just an excuse for, excuse for not including a printed manual. Safety warnings and guidelines. Uh, yeah, so don't chop up your hand. Okay. Uh, terms of use accepted. EMF handwriting. Anti-backlash. Ooh, this one's already coming apart. Acme nut kit. Let's see where I'm going to be putting these nuts. And we're already losing a few parts that that might be some Imperial thread nut. It might also be an M3. 
there's nothing in here there's just packaging smart as far as printing costs go what printing oh printing costs we're not really printing anything today it's a very similar um ah. It's very similar workflow because you, you, you are starting with a 3D model or with a 2D DXF file, but... Okay, let's hope that was an M3 because we, we're gonna grab another one. Um, it's a very sim similar approach and I think the 3D printing revolution, as it's often cited, uh, did lead to a lot of things that are used here, so yeah. Don't put the nuts in the machine. Yeah, I'm, I'm those nuts. I might put in the machine. Um, not some other ones. All right. So these are the this webcam isn't isn't playing along well. So these are the actual linear profiles. Um, if you're saying okay, this looks like some standard extruded aluminum, that's because it is. Um, so let's get that perspective going. So that's actually what the ooh, I said perspective. That's actually what the what the linear guides look like. So this is a standard extruded aluminum profile. It's pretty chunky. I was expecting this to be a bit uh, thinner. It looked smaller in the pictures. Usually it's the other way around. Um, and basically you have open builds wheels that ride on the on the edges right there. So that is a pleasant surprise. All right, that's ooh, even even got the uh, labeling on there. Malaysia, aluminum Berhard Malaysia. So that's the Z axis, and we have X and Y. Now extruded parts, whether it's aluminum or plastic, usually have fairly good tolerances. There, they're usually fairly um, accurate as far as just the overall dimensions go and straightness goes. Um, if anything, there might be ever so slightly curved, but the dimensions are going to be good and the, the surface usually is really good. So yeah, if if they make it work, that's going to be a, a very smart use of materials. So three, I'm, I'm thinking these are Acme, so these are uh, imperialistic threaded rods, but they are very high pitched. They are a four start. So similar to the... Um, similar to what you're seeing as z-axis in 3d printers these days uh, if it would actually focus there there you go you can sort of see the four starts um, but very high pitch so it's going to be interesting to see how that affects uh, backlash and how you um, yeah how it affects torque linear torque because you know it these things basically convert um, well linear torque that's just force um, basically these convert rotational torque into linear force so a higher pitch would make for less linear force for the same torque but a faster feed rate so that's going to be interesting to see where that trade-off lands um, if it's going to be skipping steps by just you know the dynamic cutting forces or if it's actually enough and it makes for for nice and it's nice smooth and quick uh ooh, that might have been loud Nice, smooth, and quick milling experience. So it does say anti-backlash Acme uh, nut kit. So I'm thinking these are not a an eight millimeter pitch or diameter. I'm thinking. Is Acme typically? I, it might just be that that Acme is like a, a synonym in this case for um, lead screws. But typically it is a, um, you know, a synonym for Imperial lead screws. You have CAD models of these. Yes, there are CAD models of this entire thing available. There is, I think it is, it's even made in on shape, I believe. Um, so yes, the entire mill is open source. You can uh, have a very liberal look at the parts. Yeah, it, it's it's on shape. If, if my brain just doesn't completely let me down here, but yeah, the CAD files are out there, so you could... That is interesting. Okay, more on that in a second. Um, so you can go in, you, you can take a look at all these parts. Um, 
and you know maybe 3d printed yourself these are 3d printed parts that we are unboxing here we're going to take a closer look at those in a second um mill one that's some sort of, of cover hope i can get it back together somehow Ah, we're gonna put that back together when we need it okay bolts i'm hoping these are these are ma is it metal the f the frame is mdf that's that's probably what's going to be in here that's probably what's going to be in here but um the linear guides are metal and well wheels standard plastic types and yeah 3d printed parts you, you get a few metal angle brackets of course screws are metal and then you have these 3d printed parts these look like stepper mounts and they are probably abs if i had to guess print quality on these is, is pretty rough um at best like so this is this is the spindle mount this basically sits on one of these aluminum profiles like this um i guess on, on the bottom somewhere and then you have um the mount for your spindle right there and then an insert if you have one that is a bit smaller you clamp it down there and that's that um all 3d printed right there pretty i mean of course the print quality doesn't matter all that much with these parts um as long as they're functional as long as they don't crack and that is uh yeah that's good okay i don't know where, what this cover does they are open builds wheels i don't know if these are genuine open builds um i think the, the genuine ones even have the the lasered um bearings so not sure about that but a compatible system definitely all right anyone tried to solder sheet metal yet um you can to a certain extent solder aluminum with at the right temperatures but yeah just google brazing uh, same thing just a bit harder that's probably what you want all right electronics emf Joachim, thanks for the tip tell me should really start a tv show like helping people to get their 3d printed dialed in just perfect including a sticker like dialed in by tom i offer my a8 for a poly project uh fun story i actually got an a an a8 in the mail two days ago or so from gearbest they finally managed to ship one out so that's gonna be interesting i will be building unboxing that thing in well three weeks or so um i'm not gonna have time to do it any earlier than that but yeah that, that would be doing a show like that doing like a, a i don't know live probably not doing, doing something like that would actually mean going out to people and and um servicing their 3d printers basically i don't know sounds like a fun idea i'll, I'll think about it thanks for the tip Or sheet metal use pop rivets. Mm. Ever think about building your own CNC? Well, that's isn't that what I'm what I'm doing right now? Kind of. All right. Um, that looks like the AliExpress special. There we go. The AliExpress special uh, CNC shield. Spelled Caesar. I don't know what what N is. But yeah you know with the white non-ESD foam on the back that is definitely um your AliExpress standard CNC shield shield so 12 to 32 volt in yeah even says on here standard components I mean I like it saves cost um so why not if it if it works then uh, sure thing four axes so xyz and I guess you could even run a 3D printer from this. Uh, X, Y, Z, and then uh, I guess a second, a second motor for something. X, Y, A. So a rotational axis you could even hook up to this guy. So standard Polulu drivers that are going to go in this. So you have a choice of using either Allegro, Texas Instruments, um, Trinamic, you name it. Anything that fits in here. And a standard Arduino Uno clone. 
So yeah, that is also um, design in Italy. That does, I don't know. Is that a genuine one? I have no idea. I, I think they're like, they're pretty good at, at cloning these. Um, I'm not sure if this is a genuine one. It doesn't, it, it doesn't say made by Arduino anywhere or by Arduino dot whatever it is, Inc. Um, design in Italy. So that might be, that might be where it is most likely a, a clone, whatever they, they work. If you don't care about the Arduino project, go ahead, use them. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe do send Arduino that, that five euro tip when you download the software. Um, I'm sure that makes up for not buying the genuine board. So yeah, um, parts, electronics, pretty standard stuff so far. Stepper motors, four pieces, Shenzhen, any cubic technology. Ah, that's, that name rings a bell. 1.5 amp, um, 40 Newton centimeters. So close up of that any cubic um, you might know them from the any cubic castle uh the delta printer Ooh, look at that zoom range and look at that blur cool there you go there's your motor steps so i'm guessing these are fairly similar motors to to what they're using in their uh, delta 3d printer so yeah that's that and a few um allegro step sticks whatever they are power input you clamp it in usb cord all right hey 3d printed sp first mod has arrived and we've got a power supply made in china oh yeah definitely made in china uh feels like it 5 amp 24 volt so that's going to be good for um separate drivers if they get 24 volt that's that should give them a bit more uh, torque and hopefully less noise again as usual us power cord um that goes straight straight in the trash yep there we go we don't use those things okay let's see what what else we get um let's get these out of the way a bit blue smoke let's hope we don't get any blue smoke all right it looks like we you know screw size wise it is fairly this looks a bit larger than, than m8 but it could just be could be m10 um this looks like it's not a lot to assemble so i'm i'm, I'm hopeful there jumpers for micro stepping okay um let's see what the frame looks like trash recycling uh well power cords okay german recycling system is pretty good um you know the trash still gets combed for recyclables it, it doesn't go straight to the landfill it um you know it gets sorted and then recycled what what can be recycled and everything else uh gets used for basically heating so and making power basically so right what do we have here um we have a metal plate that is fairly solid i don't know where that goes i'm thinking it might be something for an axis <laughs> that's all i can tell you it might be the z-axis because it makes sense to have a bit of weight there hmm. let's see um Yep, at 50% income tax does go somewhere and I'm proud paying it. <laughs> Alright, that's another plate uh, for another axis. We're going to figure out where those go. And then we have some side piece. So these are half inch, I guess, uh, MDF parts. They look like it. They look like 12.7 millimeters to me. Um, I don't need calipers for that, but a half inch plywood um, for all these parts. And they are CNC machined as well. You can see the, the individual ribs. 
see the individual um, cutting lines there, so they went with a few different passes in here. Didn't mill through all the way in one pass. We get a, sh a sheet of acrylic. This camera is a bit too tight for me today. There we go, sheet of acrylic. Um, no idea where that goes. Oh, it has a laser etched um, label on there. It would be nice if that lights up, if we can plop a few LEDs on, on the side here. <clears throat> So, and that looks like one of the sides, because the, the bottom, the base, doesn't have any, any steppers in it. So, let's see. Thoughts on MP CNC, the mostly printed CNC? I feel like that might be a bit too weak to use productively. Um, the problem with CNC is always, you know, using it... Ah, oh, so that's the front, that's where the, the acrylic goes. The front, the problem with any CNC is always getting it to mill um, reliably requires a rigid frame. And rigid frame doesn't mean, um, you know, I'm just going to use unsupported 8mm rails for everything. I don't know, I don't know how, how large the, the MP CNC rails are, but they don't seem to be large enough to make for a productive mill. I mean... This is this is what uh, what this guy is using, and I'm I'm expecting to you to be able to mill aluminum with this, and it's just these massive massive aluminum profiles that just they aren't gonna go anywhere. So, yeah. Chat aluminum is gonna be slow to cut. Yeah, probably, but you should be able to cut aluminum with this. So what I'm realizing is there is uh, practically no manual included. That's that's all you get. That is, um, you know, your, your safety warnings and guidelines, etc. Um, yeah, CN cnc.com. That is, again, s-i-e-n-c-i.com slash resources. So I guess let's just uh, open it up. Depends on the spindle. Yeah, thirty thousand RPM. That should be enough for pretty much everything. By the way, while I'm while I'm looking that up, how are you guys look liking the the new lens? I plopped a twelve millimeter on the camera instead of the sixteen I'm usually using, so the camera is a lot closer to me. I can always I can almost uh, touch it. Um, just wanted wanted to be a bit a bit closer and less less removed. Right. So let's see what we can get here. CNC.com resources why do my hotkeys only work when the window is in focus do you spell resources differently oh you do it's only one s cool it's right up here do i have the camera on off hold on if i press this button that that don't know which which buttons i'm supposed to press this one that one no Okay, B cam, whatever. I can't even show that. Okay, uh, machine assembly. Let's start with that. More light. Didn't even didn't even notice. Okay, so the this was originally. Let's let's just talk to the, <laughs> this one down here. So this was originally a Kickstarter. Nope a kickstarter project um which is why you can't no this way which is why there's the uh cnc mill v1 and the v2 right up there so this is the v2 the new and improved one if you back the kickstarter you got the v1 the one on the, on the far side there um it looks like it's still a very similar concept like i think the acrylic is, is new it might be um but i guess there are a few tweaks here and there uh, join our Facebook group. That seems to be like the, the standard go-to for anything 3D printer and, and CNC related. Yeah, we, we have a Facebook group. Job done. Um, bum, 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 bum. What other post question and answers? Okay, let's get started. Okay, unboxing. We did that. M8. Ah, so it's metric hardware. That's nice. Separate router box if ordered. Well, I ordered that separately. The basics of CNC. 
Uh, I just want to build the thing. I don't want to watch a... How long is that? Two minutes. Yeah. You guys know what 3D printers are. You, you, you can figure it out, I'm sure. Next step, assembly. Can be found here. Okay. That took a while to... Whoop. To find assembly menu. Okay, disclaimer. That's the same ones that we've already seen. List of parts. Here we go. Now we finally get to assemble something. M three eight. Now where 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 are the? Why don't my hotkeys work when the window's not in front? Yeah. Where are the M three screws? I suppose in here. <clears throat> Looks like quite a small X Y volume. Yes. That is correct, and I actually like that. I actually like that this machine is built in a compact fashion because, you know, again, rigidity. If you have a longer unsupported um, beam that is supposed to, to transfer, the force, transfer the forces from your tool head into the frame, then, you know, this thing is just going to get more floppy. This thing is going to get floppier and floppier the longer it is. So having a small, a compact machine is going to mean better, better cutting quality, uh, cheaper price. And that's not linearly. That doesn't mean, you know, you build half the volume, you get half the price. No, I think it's, it's like two, it's squared, cubic, cubed. Um, so a smaller build volume is going to mean a much lower price for the same uh cutting quality if you keep all the you know if, if you keep the same well you, you lose cutting quality by going up in scale and not increasing component rigidity or you increase price massively by going up in scale and um scaling up the rigidity of your parts accordingly so i like that you get a lot of, of bang for your buck and it's not a, it's not, you know, it's not a portal router. It's not like a, you know, you plop a sheet of plywood in and it's going to cut it. No, that's not what it's meant for. It's intricate parts. And for that, it could be pretty nice. So little tiny M3 screws. I'm hoping we're not going to need those M3 nuts. Um, right. Little tiny screws right there. And that's not even the ones we need. Cool. Router, that is going to be loud. Yes, I would like to apologize to all of you in uh, in advance because uh, it's going to be loud. I might be getting here in protection um, just to be safe. Because I do like my ears. I do like them working. Do we have do we have six of these holders? Interesting. So we actually have six of these anti-backlash nut holes. There were three in this pack and three in this one. Mm. Ah, I see. Okay. Any cubic. Again, like any cube. No, that, that doesn't work out. So we do have, um, that might have been, that might be an upgrade part. Um, we do have the standard uh, nuts, the brass nuts that you use on the linear reds, rods, on the threaded, ro threaded rods, uh, lead screws words these are the ones you use on the lead screws they have the regular backlash um and then you have these two part assemblies i guess they go together something like this maybe yeah um anyways probably spring in between here something yeah let's let's check the manual but these are supposed to take out the backlash um from your Lead screws because lead screws always have a bit of of backlash in them okay optional upgrade but you know whoops, there we go anti-backlash nuts definitely worth it now the question is okay we would need to grab a different manual for that okay so let's just get to assembling let's just assemble the regular one and see how that works out and then switch over to the upgraded one if we need it where did i put that box yeah packaging 
so much packaging. Box. Let's just use it. Why are there no empty filament boxes? Come on. Box lid also does the job. Park right there. Okay. Let's just assemble the regular ones for now. The question is going to be, did they include the regular M3 screws for these? That instructions were on the back. Oh! Why do we need... Why do we need those instructions? Now I'm gonna have to look for them. Where did they put these? Come on! Whatever. Okay, let's build it. Let's build it with the basic nuts. Executive decision. M38. That looks like an M36. And apparently, they only include the screws you really need. So uh, we will need this. But where did I put that box? And spin parts. Probably threw it somewhere. Okay. That's also not the... There's also not the, the M3 screws we need. Let's just try these. These are M3 by 6. So they are... These, at least they look like it. They might also just be the correct size, so... You might get lucky. Uh, screw these together. They're definitely not the cap head screws that you are expecting. So these have a yeah, two millimeter hex head. Which means I'll need to grab a two millimeter hex key from somewhere. I usually have some around. Uh, that's a 1.5. It's also interesting that there are no tools included, especially like the, the smaller, um, the smaller hex keys. Usually, when you get a set, those are not included. Like the two millimeter ones, they don't come with that. So let's see. That that might also be a two point five. Yep. Let me just see if I can find a two millimeter hex key. I did bring. I did bring the. The regular set of, of hex keys that goes down to uh, 2.5 but um, yeah no two millimeter key included um, I will which one do I Okay, one of these should be the correct size, and yes, this one is. Um, yeah, I did. It, it was not a box. I was looking for a box, but I was just looking for the bag. So the bag we found. Uh, question, chat, let me know. 
anti-backlash or not um should we just put on the stock backlash ridden nuts or should we use um the upgraded anti-backlash nuts in this build tom should 3d print some custom keycaps on that one hour thing maybe yeah these are these are actually just standard uh cherry keycaps mx sort of thing so that could work anti 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 they gave you six to both what you, you can you can only put one set of uh of nuts on anti 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 okay so what do you do with these you just throw them out uh, i guess i can keep them for a project i just don't have any any spare um high pitch lead screw though okay so that is decided no need to install something you, you might regret yeah assemble components okay just gonna zoom in here and look at the screen um so that's our assembly instructions right there so we use The small, the yeah, whatever. Okay, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out somehow. So we're not going to be using these M3 screws. I'd need to go and grab another M3 nut because I did drop one. Thanks for for the mods, by the way. Much appreciated. Okay, where do we start? Assembly components. So this one set. So arrow right there. So these go. Where is that? Okay. okay, this part has an arrow right here that faces that way. So we get the larger half of the nut that apparently gets inserted. Yeah, that definitely gets inserted in here. And I'm thinking we need to line it up with the um, through holes right there, so... Like this! Maybe. Well, there are some 3D printed bits sticking out. Because of the stream today, there will be no stream tomorrow? Uh, I don't think so. Why not have two streams? Okay, then what? Then we add, then we screw this all together. Cool. Maybe two live streams special? Yeah. There is not going to be a live stream next week, I think. Maybe Saturday? Ah, Saturday maybe, but not on Sunday. So no washers on this side, which is okay. Belt system is, is bed for milling. Yes, it is. Too flimsy. Unless you have your software very well optimized. Um, yeah, I mean, I might have to push uh, the Philween episodes back a bit those were scheduled to come out today I, i've not finished those yet i still have to uh, shoot some more footage and uh, and edit it but well whatever i shouldn't have said it i shouldn't have said saturday in the video because like the quote was the filming episodes will come out every saturday uh i should have just said weekend give me a bit more leeway there 
do a live stream every day why not well if i don't if i, if I don't want to get anything else done then yeah i'm gonna do live streams every day but just look at look at like the ratings of live streams and live stream as content um not everyone likes them so yeah thanks for the tip camille much appreciated 610 watching interesting on a saturday Uh, I don't have a 2.5 millimeter bit for the cordless drill. I should have bought one. Mach 3 and a, and a decent mainboard. Are people still using Mach 3 plus a serial port? I thought that it was like 2002 when I last saw those. Shouldn't be, these be lock nuts? Yeah, maybe. Which is like a yeah, definitely. But uh, it's it's looking like it's it's holding up. The thing is, you know, with lock nuts, yeah, lock nuts like nylock nuts. Um, and that would definitely make sense here because you are pressing against a polymer, aka plastic, 3D printed part on the other side. So the screw heads up here, the screw heads up here are actually butting up against um, this printed part. So they are going to sink into the part over time as you have tension on, on these. Um, so if you have regular nuts, those are going to come loose over time. So, yeah, well, hold on, let me, let me change a quick setting here, uh, there we go. ISO, ISO limit, can I, why can I not set an ISO limit, whatever, okay. So, auto ISO, just to get that, uh, that brightness up. Okay, first one done, then of course you, you get the springs that go over, um, over these and I guess you thread in the um, your lead screw and then add the other one which means this part is always going to be pressed uh, into or in this direction I'm hoping that was assembled correctly it looks like it yeah am I going to get any of uh, Joel's specialty um, protopasta filament uh, not for now he, has, he, actually has, he actually asked me if I wanted some thing is if you look behind me if you look behind me there's, there's already more than enough filament it's already piling up over here I, I I really I don't need more filament um so for now no I should ask him if, if you want some of mine <laughs> that's that's kind of coming together we're doing a, a third run with the uh, dust filament yeah there we go so we had the first one which you might have seen behind me in a few prints i used it on the on the cr10 build then we did a second one which wasn't all that spectacular um and yeah now we're doing a third one that is hopefully worthy of the name infinity blue any idea when the next 3d senpai stream live stream is uh not yet But at least a month away, at least a month out. And I'm hoping that's going to be the DB3. Uh, I'm hoping that's actually going to be the one that uh, gets shipped out to patrons. Um, I do have t-shirt designs. I do have um, the filament you know, planned out and worked out. And we, we're going to have something that we can actually ship um, without paying 50 bucks per roll. Um, so that's that's figured out. I just need uh, filament to be done, basically, and then I can start uh, shipping some stuff out. But if you know me, I mean, I want it to be something that I would print with as well. I don't I don't just want it to be something that is like, yeah, here's here's marketing item A. Um, I want it to be something that that I'm proud of. That I would personally use. Same with the, with the t-shirt designs. I I do want to. Uh, I I do want something that is actually wearable. So. Yeah. 
filament is coming along. We're getting there. We're getting there. This stream is going to be noisy, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I'm think I think so. If it, if it works. So I do have some. It's off camera, but I do have some acrylic here. I do have some MDF uh, and some rolled aluminum, which I know is is horrible to to machine. I've tried to machine on a different uh, machine, the Mendel Max conversion. And it, it's possible, but it's just not fun. So I think we're going to start with um, the MDF, which should be the easiest stuff to machine. Okay, can you see it on camera? No. We're going to start with the MDF. Then maybe we're going to move to acrylic with a lot of cooling. Oh, God. There we go. And if that all goes well, then maybe we can move on to the aluminum. Did a 3D print the parts yourself? No, that was all part of the kit. The kit came with everything you're going to see today, except for the Makita router. Um, that is a part that I bought myself on Amazon. If you want to get one like those, uh, of course, linked in the description, Amazon affiliate link, yada, yada, yada. So yeah. Also links to, no, wrong way. Links to CNC, etc. also in there. No, no coupon codes, no special deals. Um, not today, at least. Yeah, the thing with the, with the Bosch hammer is um, the, the cordless, um, the cordless one has this belt clip on the back and no rubber surface. So you, this, this one isn't all that great to use as a mallet. So I'm not. How much will the filament cost patrons? Nothing. I'm paying for that. It's not going to be a full one kilogram spool. It's going to be 500 gram spools um, because shipping is going to be um, much simpler that way. If we stay under one kilogram, it's going to be 70 euros for shipping and not like 25. So it's not going to be full spools, but the, the 500 gram spools that, that I'm shipping out, um, those will be free for um, my long-term, well, not long-term, for my, my dearest patrons, let's put it like that. Um, the people that have stuck around and supported me for a while, but those will get uh, free filament shipped out and f or free t-shirts. Again, low cost, I'm paying for that as a way to, th as a way to say thank you. Might become a, a regular thing even. Who knows? Shipping to Australia wins will send you bankrupt? No, it won't. It's the same seven bucks worldwide. I think it, it can't ship to like North Korea or anything, but anywhere worldwide. No tracking though. <laughs> And uh, yeah, and yeah, Dust Filament is uh, sponsoring the filament cost, so that's much appreciated. I, I would have, I would have ponied for that. I would have ponied up for that too. But they were like, "Hey, yeah, we're, we're going to sponsor the, the roles for your patrons," um, and basically, as a trade deal, they will keep um, the the color in stock. If you want to buy more, it's just going to be a special edition color. They um, have in their store. Okay, no, it's not going to be a monthly box. <laughs> Can't really do that. Um, yeah, so if you if you want to just buy some, um, Dust for the Mint is going to have it in their regular store. I don't know how well they're going to be doing uh, international shipping, but yeah. So we have two screws left. We have uh, two M3 screws left over. Um, plus a nut, so the one I dropped isn't a big issue apparently. Install onto gantry, so I guess at this point we get to follow um, the regular build manual. Why is it so blurry? Install onto gantries and then compress springs and thread onto lead screws. So that is just the, the regular build manual, so let's jump back into that one. 
Is this my first time building this kit? Um, yes, it is. I have, it's actually, so I've, I've done some CNC, some DIY CNC stuff before, um, but this is my first time building this exact kit. What model Knipex is this? 2612-200. So yeah. Which one do we need? Which plate do we need? So we need the one that has... Is that the... Ah, so that's the Delrin part. Palm. Okay, board G X Z. Put two ninety degree offset on OSP board G. Why wet? Cool. <laughs> So those are M5 by 25. So I'm guessing that's these. There aren't any other sizes there. So that must be the ones. That webcam looks horrible. I should really put the GoPro up there. Um, we drop, which, which way does this go? I guess this way. Okay, so that's, that's the orientation the, the manual shows. Yeah, two holes right there. Drop one of them on with this orientation. Screws through here. White balances way off. Yeah, it's a it's just a cheap HP webcam. Um, supposedly full HD, but I don't believe that. It's something, it's some upscaled crap you're getting out of that one. So. Might have to look into. I'm missing bits. Might have to look into what what else I can use. I don't want to just get another uh, Panasonic G7 and, and drop it up there. Though to be honest, I was looking at, at just getting a, a GH5, so I would have one spare G7 for this sort of stuff. Uh, let's see. Was I at the Maker Fair Friedrich's Hafen today? No, I was not. There are, apparently is also Maker Fair at the. Uh, the Bodensee today. Hold on, so this one has the the arrow facing this way, then this one needs to have the arrow facing this way, okay. Like that, and then you get a nut through the hole. Fingers cut on the bands of someone slashed their wrist with a chisel. Cool, that sounds like fun. Not really. Hope they're okay. What am I going to use for dust collection? Um, wrong plate for instruction. Well, point A, these screws are too short for this. Oh. Wrong plate for instructions. These don't have, so yeah, these plates don't have any numbers. That's, that's true. This looks, again, I was wondering, this looks weird. Okay. So you use the other plate, but then again, these plates just have, you know, they're just a plate. I looked at this, like, there's some holes there, there's some holes here, and that looked like the right thing, but it's not. So which one do we use? Do we use the metal plate? That, that would make sense because then we get ah yeah then the screws would be long enough okay instructions my my old enemy is back so okay so we need to line up holes so if you can see this there are some different sized holes it might be hard to pick up and you do have to pay attention again so that's a large one, that's a large one, that's also a large one, and there's a large one. And there's small, small, small. So this is neither rotationally nor, um, what's it called, mirrored symmetrical. So there's only one orientation that this is gonna fit. So the two holes go up here. And then we put this guy on with the arrow facing this way, okay. 
Okay. No, it smells like paint. Interesting. Then this guy goes with the arrow facing that way. Cool, no washers. Just the nuts. So I think, yeah, doing this down like that is going to be the smallest idea because you cannot tighten the nuts on the other side. There you go. Which way is this? Is this nut recess supposed to clamp down? Uh, I guess kind of like that. Maybe not rotate that much. Let's try that again. I guess it's going to drag itself into position. You need the other bracket? What? You might be a bit late. Uh, what are my thoughts on using AC current, cutting the voltage to zero, crossing and PID to feed energy on a heated bed using low volt? Ooh. Ooh. This Sputnik, that sounds like a bad idea. Because insulation and stuff, I uh, really don't want any uh, 240 volt. I don't know what what uh, what voltage you, you're on, but I wouldn't want any 240 volt um, power on a PCB that is exposed and open and non-insulated. Just don't do it. Don't do it. Um, Okay, there's our first plate. Yay. Now we assemble the, the Delrin one. Okay. So screws through here and nuts on top. This is symmetrical, so the arrow does not matter. That's cool. So this one done. This is, I like how heavy this is. Now we get to assemble this guy. So, two screws in here, somewhat tight, three printed parts, you can't imagine that three printed parts work well in a CNC environment, well, it always depends on it always depends on part geometry and how beefy you make them. Um, these don't look particularly beefy to me. Um, like, you, uh, I mean, I, I could see a bit more material being used here, but just because it's plastic, just because it's um, 3D printed, doesn't mean it has to be weak. You can you can design a, a CNC machined aluminum or even steel part to be weaker than a plastic part that comes off of a 3D printer. Um, it's not about the technology you use, it's how you use it, as usual. Let's see if we can get these two... Eh, I guess not. The regular torque that M5 needs. Usually we just need a tiny bit of... Oh. Here we go, more leverage. Have you guys seen the E10, so you 10 like, what do you think? Yeah, actually Gearbest sent me a, an email about that one yesterday. Um, yeah, it seems like Anet just went like, hey, the CO10 is selling pretty well, we want one to... Um, Seems like the CO10 is making a few better design choices just uh, when you're looking at, at the profiles, etc. But yeah, it, it'll have to, you know, the machine itself will have to um, prove itself. You, you can't really judge it from um, from, a, from a Gearbest or AliExpress listing and a few pictures. That rarely does uh, anything justice. So yeah. Mm. 
Would you guys like me to try one out? That's the question, I guess. Why no MOSFET? What, what random questions? Yeah, would, would you guys like me to try out the E10, the uh, CR10 style gear best, uh, gear best. The, C, the, the, Creality the Creality CR10 style ANET machine? Is this the one we're supposed to be using? I think so. Yeah. Okay. So, wheels. Go for it. I mean, I do have a shit ton of, of printer reviews, etc., coming up. Um, just putting that out there. My queue is long. And the more you guys want me to do reviews, the less guys, etc., I'm going to be able to do. I don't have infinite resources. So the question is always going to be do you want me to do this more than you want me to, to do other things? Okay, so one nice nice touch I'm seeing here is the wheels they're using do have, I oh, can actually see it in there, do have the uh, the shim on the inside, which means um, you're not gonna be squashing the bearings uh, as you tighten this guy down. So you can actually tighten it nicely and get good rigidity um, and not have the bearings bind up. So yeah, that's nice, that's nice. And washes, that's the M5 washes right there. That is, uh, yeah, metric. I, I, I only do metric shit tons. Okay, so all of these have the washers inside. This is almost a, a bit overexposed. So we're putting four wheels on this guy. The E the E10 is smaller than the CO10, really? How much? I didn't I didn't look at the at the listing much. Um, I just I just looked at it. it was like oh yeah look it's a it's a CO10 knockoff, which by itself is also apparently uh, not Creality's original design, but whatever. So, uh, that that might be the wrong hole, I know. So, with the, let's see, with the, but this way, the two large holes up here, we drop in a, we lose a washer, we drop in a wheel, we drop in the eccentric nut insert into this one. and on the bottom one as well. So this one has the eccentric nut on the back so you can adjust the wheel right there and in this one, same thing, same story. Two hundred by 270 by 300 for the a 810. That, sound, that sounds pathetic compared to the CO10. Um, by the way, is Nightbot online? Let me just check him. So, do we use a washer on the back? We do not. Okay. So, straight nuts right there. Is it really eccentric? Well, these are, um, as you turn these, they allow you, so th these, this hole is a bit larger than, um, than what the M5 needs, so it allows you to move the wheel around in this hole within, you know, within constraints, but um, that's how you adjust these rails. It's the same with any open build system. Uh, you have two on one side that are solid, so these two don't adjust, they are just locked in place. And these two on the opposite side, you can rotate these nuts and you basically move the, the wheel further away or closer to the linear or to the track. That button is on. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, um, as usual, I, I do prefer Nightbot a bit more aggressive than he needs to be. 
Uh, I don't know, just uh, gives me peace of mind. So I should really be using a wrench for this. And I do have my wrenches right here. Not all of them, but the ones I need. Which size is that? No, eight. Nine. Eight. Eight. So the ones with the regular nuts, the ones right here, these we can tighten up all the way already. Um, there we go. It's 10 newton meters, roughly. Should be fine. Um, these we can tighten up, these are going to stay down. The other ones, the adjustable ones, these need to stay a bit loose and we adjust these once we drop them onto the rail. Okay, these two, these are still loose so you can still rotate these, uh, more or less, and adjust them. It's I mean, still quite a hefty plate. Okay. Step. Oh, step. Done. Match the eccentric nuts to the larger holes. Yeah, okay. If you, you can't drop the eccentric nuts into uh, the smaller holes. Okay. That's done. Now more wheels on the rest of the, of the holes. Okay. Same thing. Same story. Is that what those numbers on a drill mean? What? Hmm. The numbers on a drill, if it says three, it is a three millimeter drill. If it says five, it's a five millimeter drill. That's that's the only numbers that are supposed to be on a drill. If there are any other numbers on a drill, maybe throw them out and get ones that uh, have some meaningful uh, labeling. Oh, drill, hold on. You're not saying drill bits, you're saying, uh, you're saying this thing. <laughs> as, as I'm ranting about uh, numbered drill bits. So these are, yeah, that they are roughly newton meters. Roughly. I've tried it out on the Bosch ones. The Bosch ones are pretty close. Um, the, the Bosch um, clutches. So you're saying the numbers on a clutch. Yeah, these, these tiny 10.8, or now they're called 12 volt, um, cordless drills they they match up fairly well to um what a torque wrench is going to set it to um with 1 to 20 etc newton meters at least again at least on the Bosch drills on, on this series roughly it's good enough for for that sort of thing Right, washer, don't forget these. Nope. Well, yeah. This is going to need a larger one. Arduino shield, yes. F4 is C. JZ is asking, could we have some news of the invisible resin frog? Thanks for it. Um, haven't had the time to play around with it yet, so I've been running around like a headless chicken for the last few weeks, trying to get a few things done, and um, the duplicated D7 was not one of the things that was on my list, so haven't really had the time to play around with it yet. Uh, the resin is boxed up, the resin has not set up yet, which is good. Um, even like out in the open, no no black um, covers over it. But yeah, just haven't had the time for it yet. Again, you guys want me to test the the Anet E10, then something else is gonna get uh, yeah is is gonna go on the slow track. STFM, if your driver has no clutch or no, no torque limiter, then um, you're not going to be able to use that <laughs> for uh, accurately tightening down screws. But, ooh, look at that. It rolls. 
but I, I, I always tighten my screws like that. Wood screws, not so much because I want them to be flush with the surface most of the time. But if it's machine screws, you know, you, you know your torque numbers for specific uh, screw sizes, like an M3, I'm not gonna go beyond like a, a one or a two. Um, an M4, I can tighten up to four or five, and five can go up to 10, etc., etc. And then six, basically as much as it gets. And, they, and then that they're gonna be torqued to their nominal torque and not gonna come loose. So that's a nice thing to know and a nice uh, comfort feature. This is not an impact, Ooh, not this one. That's not an impact drill, by the way. That's just a regular uh, driver. Yes. This one is. Steve M's is also not. Okay, this one is binding because it didn't put the washer in. Cool, I thought I forgot one. Love to see a test of the diamond hardened. Which one, the, the genuine one or the one that you can buy as like a E3D quad, a triple hardened on AliExpress? Have I ever found the original frog in my backyard? Well, that, that, one's, that one's gone for a while. Okay. Look at that. That's smooth. Well, this one's this one's a bit rough. So I guess the um, these these aren't tightened down yet. So I guess the shims on the inside or the wheels aren't machined that precisely, which might hint me towards these not being uh, genuine open builds wheels. Again, I think the open builds wheels have custom bearings, I believe, with yeah, with not just the 626, 6 to 5 um, engraved on the sides, but actually open builds engraved on the sides. I think, I think, I might be wrong there. That's what my brain's telling me right now. Will I try 3D printing on this? I don't think I should. Okay, let's see. That's done. And we're moving on to, again, eccentric ones out here. We're moving on to the Delrin plate. Not much to do wrong there. And let's go in the counterboard parts. Will I ever be doing a live build of a Core XY? Well, it depends on what you think a Core XY is. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. <laughs> But from, from what I've realized, people don't know what a core XY is and they keep asking for it. Can this mill, for, can this mill aluminum? Um, I believe so. I believe so. Um, at least on somewhat slower settings. I mean, you're not going to do uh, hotkeys. Dope. There we go. Uh, you're not going to be doing any sort of, of HPC high performance cutting on, on this thing. Um, I mean, that's, that's out of the question, but you are probably going to be able to do some, some light duty aluminum, maybe not use like the, an eight millimeter, um, roughing bits and just go through it like crazy, but you know, with reasonable feed rates and with reasonable pocketing strategies, you should be able to mill aluminum just fine from, from what I'm. From what I'm feeling here, from how solid this machine feels to me, aluminum should be fine. How tough is machining three millimeter carbon fiber sheet? Uh, it's not tough, it's just, you know, the dust. <laughs> just, just getting anywhere, everywhere and it's carcinogenic and it's like not, not good, not good. So it's probably not something you want to do if you can avoid it. That it would even do a 0.2 inch. What What is a 0.2 inch? Do you have that in metric? Cut without cheddar. Uh, I mean, there's quite a bit of, of weight um, on the tool head, so I'm not too worried about, about cheddar. Yeah, carbon should be cut on the water jet. That is probably the best option, yeah.
like carbon fiber again i i wouldn't want to mill that um it's more of a it's more of a grinding through it really um because you, you're not you're not really cutting it you cut you can cut the resin yeah but you can't really cut the fiber so you're more like um gr slowly grinding through it which again just creates a whole lot of dust um that you don't want to have floating around chip and cutter cooling correct yes um so yeah um i'm gonna get some uh, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to to get in here with the well maybe i, I will okay we'll get my socket wrench in a second that's good enough yeah um cooling aluminum on this thing is going to be fun big air quotes there because aluminum just yeah cutting it with coolant is is your best option and this entire thing is mdf this entire thing is wood so you don't really want any uh any excess amounts or excessive amounts of of coolant slushing around in this thing so yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be interesting how well we get it to, to cut aluminum. Mm. All right, so this one is assembled. Again, we're gonna have to tighten those down um, once we get it on the rails. These are in place, and these are still somewhat loose. That is as intended. Next up, motors. So SM and PAM and M38. It's interesting that they show, no, can't zoom. Okay, ah, that's not a con control key. They show the, um, the in-hex screws right there, but they actually include the little mushroom head uh, screws, which I guess do the same job, but these use a 2.5. There we go. Um, they show the in uh, screws there. These use a point or 2.5 millimeter hex key and the ones they are including use a two millimeter one. So yeah, just something to keep in mind. But we attach SM to PAM to, with M38. Stepper connector, okay, out the bottom towards where the uh, labeling is okay. This one's done. So three. We have now the interesting thing is we have five seemingly identical uh, stepper motor mounts. We wh wh why do we get five? That still doesn't make any sense to me. Um, but yeah, stepper motors. And then there's the labeling. There's the imprinted font right there. And we have the connector facing this way okay outside so this almost looks like you could uh attach a bone line to it and, and use it as an extruder <laughs> but yeah two for idlers i don't know how you'd why you'd want an idler for um a lead screw doesn't seem to make any sense to me ah, ah perfect the spares i don't know so I'm, I'm hoping they're not just um betting on the fact that some of these will break and you're then gonna have two spares uh. printing parts could be a bit better yeah i mean you, you can tell they're printed with they're printed fast they're printed hot they're printed with a maybe even a, a bit larger nozzle um 
but definitely huge layer heights print quality i mean it's not an issue as long as stuff fits together as long as these holes are maybe reamed out um but yeah print quality is pretty poor in these parts it's not that it matters as long as they are strong but yeah could be nicer It's all about speeds and feeds at that point. Isn't it always about the speeds and the feeds um, when, it, when it comes to cutting anything? Just listen, looking at all those missing sections right there. Uh, they're, they're not missing. They're not gaps. Just like little startup missing blobs. Steppers will demagnetize each other, put in proximity of each other. Nope, that is 100% not true. It's the magnet is on the inside. Magnet is on the on the inside of these. The outside is just, you know, regular um, sheet metal stacks. So there's a term for that. Okay, more screwing. I thought I had a. I thought I had cut off one of these uh, two millimeter hex keys at some point, so I could chuck it in a drill. See how hard it is to break a spare. Well, I first I want to know that they really are just spares. I don't want to break a part that I'm going to need. Are the motor connectors the good way around? Yes, they are. So supposedly you're supposed to have supposedly the text on this side and the connector on the same side, and that's exactly what the what the manual shows right there. Okay, tiny, tiny screws and tiny, tiny holes that are a bit tight, but at least they're the correct holes for these screws. Ow. All right. So again, I think this entire setup is going to be fairly well stiff fairly rigid um again we are using these these beefy aluminum um, profiles as linear guys that are screwed to something on their ends which is the the um yeah, the mdf frame it's a box frame so that in itself is going to be fairly strong already Okay, T handle Allen wrench. Yeah, I I don't have them in two millimeter. If these were, I guess I could I could just grab um, a set of regular hex key, um, regular two point five millimeter hex head screws. But these little uh, mushroom head types, they have that two millimeter size that I don't have in any other that I don't have any other tool for. Um, than these crappy, uh, you know, cheapo L wrenches. So that's what I have to use, unfortunately. Not sure why they didn't just go with standard uh, hex or even torx screws. The other end of the extrusion. Ah, okay, so that makes sense. So, okay, I was wondering about that, how the, um, the aluminum extrusion would be mounted. Okay, but that makes sense. So, I'm guessing these just go in here. Boom. Done. So, you screw... The, these are going to be the screws that attach to the frame, I think. And then you have the threads 
poking through here you just plop a, through, a screw through these and that should be secured um, quite well okay that makes sense now i know why they have their shape you can use a torx and a hex uh, i could make a dirty joke here but yeah it's not it doesn't fit well At least these these are all in roughly the correct position and we're not like cross threading any yet. That's all good, even though I, I realize it's not the most exciting thing to watch. Most CNC kits take multiple weeks to assemble. Yeah, um, or multiple weekends. It's sort of the same thing as with a 3D printer. If you get like a, a super cheapo kit and you've never done it before and you only have crap instructions, then it might take you a few weekends to get it assembled and tuned in and the entire thing set up and, you know, learn how to use it, etc., etc., etc. And I think it's just the same thing for um, if you build a portal style uh, router. Ow! This one doesn't look like it's all the way tight, but. I guess it is, the motor is not going anywhere. So we don't seem to be having any other thrust bearings other than what the motors themselves have. And usually these motors have a little spring washer in the back. So there are two bearings in here, there's one in the back. Uh, you can actually see it right in there. That's that's the motor shaft in the center, and then there's the bearing um, around it, and there's another one right up in here, and typically there's a spring washer on the bottom here. So as I push this down, typically on a stepper motor, you'd see the entire um, stepper shaft getting pushed into the motor body. So if I grab another stepper, which I... That's the problem when you, when you you know, when you put stuff away, you put it all nicely in boxes, etc. But then you have to know which boxes to look in. Is that one that we can show? Yeah, I think this one this one is springy, I believe. So if we press down on this one. Yeah, you, you can you can see that going in, right? So that's what happens with a typical stepper motor because they have that spring washer in the back and you can see that the bearing is a bit further recessed. These don't seem to do that. So these might be custom made. These might be... Um, built without that spring washer so yeah that's a good point because if you were using just a um a stepper motor with that spring washer in there you'd have a huge linear flex on that flex on that um on the lead screw so any forces would just you know push that shaft in instead of um you know getting transferred rigidly so that's nice that is nice right assembly let's see what else we get so linear rails that looks good so i guess each motor gets a rail and we're using the th the short m8 screws so one two three one two three cool What are you guys talking about? Hammers? Vice grips? What? Okay, um, short M8 screws. So this is all stainless hardware. And yep. wow, there you go. Um, the and A270 that is A2 stainless steel. That's the type I think that's like a four something, four oh, I don't know which one it is exactly. Um, A2 and 70 is the strength of the screw, the uh, the yield strength. So that is basically as good as an 8.8 .8 screw um, 
Yeah. They did have a regular steel version as like an, an anodized, uh, not anodized, um, zinc plated, what are they called? Regular type of screw. So that's pretty good hardware, probably overkill. But then again, uh, stainless hardware really isn't that expensive these days and it certainly makes sense to use them in contact with aluminum. And it also just looks nice. Galvanized, yes, correct, thank you. So what I'm, what I'm sort of missing here is any sort of, of alignment tools or, or any ways of, of aligning things at all. This is just relying on the 3D printed parts to be um, dimensionally accurate, to be, okay, yeah, okay I, I, I see the gaps you guys are talking about here, um, to be, you know, rect rectangular, square, to be dimensionally okay. There's, there's nothing that you can kind of adjust or like tweak to get stuff in the correct alignment, which is uh, bold. But probably you don't need uh, any adjustment at this level of uh, C and Cing that we're going to be doing. Some NSCs in the uh, between stainless and aluminum. Well, it's you know it's an M8 screw. If it if it gets stuck, if it doesn't come out, then uh, I mean. I can always put the put the impact driver to it and, and just bang it out. Let's see if this one is actually cut well because this one does not like it doesn't feel like it wants to go in. Oh, it looks good. Let's try that again. Okay, right, just a bit tight. Yeah. Okay. Two down, one to go. Yutaka Takin something. Sorry. Um, still puzzled why they use stainless heat breaks with aluminum heat sinks on hot ends. Well, what else would, would they be using? Aluminum heat breaks, then the heat break wouldn't be doing its job. Stainless heat sinks, well, then the stain, uh, then the heat sink wouldn't be doing its job as well. So, yeah, you, you need that combination of materials to get the, to get a hot end that performs best. Of course, you can go with something like an E3D V6 or a Light 6. It's not a V6, it's a Light 6 uh, that uses an all stainless construction. But to get that to perform, they actually put a, uh, a Teflon liner in the in the heat break because the stainless steel heat sink does not perform as well as the aluminum one. They use they could use copper heat sinks. Yes, they could. But copper, first of all, copper is is not copper is not your friend. Copper is your is your enemy. Wherever you see it, it, it nah. Copper is super hard to machine especially compared to aluminum, copper is expensive and copper is heavy. So in a, in a situation where you want your hot end to be fairly affordable, in a situation where you want to pump out thousands of them per month, and in the situation where you, uh, you know, want it to be as light as possible because it's zipping around, you don't want to be using copper. And aluminum, aluminum is like 80% as good thermally. So yeah, aluminum is fine. Okay, let's see. Um, well, aluminum isn't just fine, aluminum is actually the better choice. LS200. And we have SC for solid coupler and LS for lead screw. Okay. So that is LS200. I think that is the short one. I think 200 refers to this being 200 millimeters long. What about carbon heatsink? Like, like, like wh wh what, what are you even asking? Carbon heat, come on. Maybe, maybe you want to make it out of diamond. 
That will work. Diamond heat sinks are great. Silver is also silver is also pretty nice when it comes to thermal stuff. Um, but really, aluminum is fine. Do you know about the pico hot end? Yeah. Ooh, we found. Cool, we found the uh, the two millimeter hex keys that we were looking for. Nice that we find them now. So yeah. All right, aluminum couplers, anodized blue. These look like an like an OC car part almost, with the the bright blue anodizing. So this one goes on here. There's no no springiness in here either. So it's a all it's an all rigid connection. That is nice. I like that. Okay, by silent stepper motors, you can use dynamic drivers um, that make your stepper motors pretty much silent if you set them up correctly. Carbon is full of air. What 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 are you guys talking about? Carbon is a chemical element. Carbon is not full of air. Carbon is carbon. And then this guy goes in here. From which direction do we thread this in? From the side with the nuts. Okay. So that is the small steel plate. So thread this in like that. Carbon can take many forms, yes, but the same way oxygen is oxygen, carbon is carbon, you know? <laughs> like hydrogen is hydrogen, etc, etc. You might be talking about carbon fiber, yeah, you might be talking about uh, graphene, you might be talking about graphite. How do these work? They have anything that, that keeps this thing from from turning loose? I do you just ah okay so you yeah. I guess you compress these together right slot in slot like that okay that makes sense let me get you close up of that. Let me get you a an in focus close of, of that. Come on. There we go. Okay. So spring over these. There are these tabs and slots on the corresponding piece, and you slot these together. You screw in your lead screw until it bites, and at that point it is tensioned. So this thing presses this direction, this presses the other, and basically it just keeps the um, the backlash in the lead screw yeah. preloaded in one direction. It's not like entirely back backlash free at this point. I mean, I can still hear it clicking. You can still see it moving, but at least it's like, you know, pushed up in, in this direction. It's always getting pulled in this direction. So yeah, it's not a, it's not a perfect anti-backlash uh, solution. I would like to see something that isn't spring-based, that is rigid, that you can adjust to compensate for backlash exactly. Uh, and, and I'm not sure how it's gonna, how well that's gonna do in like load-bearing situations where it might be something pulling this way, but we'll, we'll have to see, we'll have to see. Okay, router would easily override the spring. Yeah, I have a feeling. I have a feeling uh, it would or it will. Okay. Oh, look, there's my. What is that even? Okay, that is a. Uh, where's my hand? There's my hand. Potentiometer for DC motor control, right there. Cool. 
Now it focuses, <laughs> obviously. This part's done. At least this one side on, and on the other side we get another nut that we're gonna do the same thing with, um, with the two-part anti-backlash assembly. So, what up next? Did we tighten this down real well? Oh, we did. And now we get to assemble it onto these buttons. These are Cherry MX Reds. They don't have any sort of feedback. So I might accidentally press one and not feel it. Um, okay, this one goes onto the short. Make sure to push coupler all the way onto motor shaft before tightening. Okay, this one goes onto the short rail. Let's try that. Let's get this thing to focus on something that's a bit more interesting. But you have been looking for that for ages. What? Oh, for that DC motor controller? No, I, I, I know it's there. I just haven't had a need for it for a while. It's That was actually intended for the other mill sort of style setup I have, the Mendel Max, um, con the converted Mendel Max, which uses a 40, 48 volt DC uh, spindle. This is tight. This is this is very very tight. This is actually too tight. It feels like um, that is a forty-eight volt DC spindle. And how do how do we how do we get this song? So much for these aluminum extrusions, all right. Uh, precisely machined. Let's see if we can actually rotate this into a low tension position first. But it should rotate by itself. Yeah. Okay, that's better. So these... Um, these eccentric nuts right here, these are loose, but they aren't loose enough to rotate on their own at this moment. So you do have to rotate them to the lowest tension position and then they should slide on. Cool. Now that is, oh wow. So this is the lowest tension setting. These are all the way on the outside, right there in this one as well and this is this is tight so okay now, now it's now it's kind of okay but i don't know if this is actually going to be able to if the just the stepper motor is actually going to be able to turn uh, the uh, the lead screw at all okay so that is tight but it's too tight for it to turn on its own so we do have to line up the d on the shaft <laughs> with the grub screws right there does this have does this machine have any sort of encoder for positional accuracy no it does not have any sort of that it's just regular step drivers with regular 3d printer um, style stepper drivers. It's actually regular 3D printer uh, stepper motor with regular 3D printer style stepper drivers. There is no feedback, so the machine does not know if it loses a step or not. And we're just gonna have to see how well that actually works out um, over time, especially since these lead screws do have a, a fairly steep pitch. Again, feeds and speeds, we're gonna have to see if we can you know, if you can get it slow enough to, I want to say print, but to mill reliably, to cut reliably. Okay, that's one, that is tight. And yeah, that is pretty hard to turn. 
I mean, the, the stepper motors themselves, they're fairly easy. But this thing with with the wheels on here, I'm not sure how well that is going to, uh, yeah, to hold up over time, and how if if it might just be too much drag. But we will see. Okay, that is one down. And then we just assemble the cross brace of that side. So, same again, we thread, okay, we thread through the opposite side. Rotate, we don't need to rotate these. Um, until you can no longer rotate the V-groove bearings with your fingers. Come on, we it's already hard to push, so, okay. Um, Right, so this one, this longer one, gets screwed through here from the opposite side of where the nut sits. So just the thread rod right there. You could loosen them off. What? Loosen off the fixed rollers? The fixed ones? The, these, so the fixed rollers, they have, they have closely fitting, um, these two right there they have closely fitting through holes through the steel plate there is nothing um there's there's no leeway there isn't there's nowhere they could go so yeah that's i don't think that's going to do anything any play in the fixed wheel holes no that does not look like it's uh like it's on straight. There's actually anything but straight. I don't know, there's no way of of adjusting it other than pushing it into place. That looks better. But of course you just this is not a machined end, so this is just the um the open lead screw end and you're tightening into these um threads, I guess. And this one is all the way in, yes it is. So, it might just come a bit crooked. Looks good. Better. And then this one gets screwed from the opposite side. So from this, no, yes. Okay, from this side. So right here we do have to add the anti-backlash mechanism um, before we can screw it in. So that's this one. And then the spring, and this needs to come all the way back. We can push this guy in and not get the spring threads caught. Someone was asking about a, an Amazon.de link for um, something. I think it was for the for the router we're using here. Um, check the link. It should forward you to to the correct Amazon store in your country. There we go. There we go, that's better. Are the adjustable rails? There are no adjustable rails. This is not a um, an adjustable nut. It's just a, what's, what's it saying, adjustable rails? Adjustable nuts, oh, okay. Yes, the adjustable nuts are on the same side of the rail. Wilson RJ, is it just me for four hundred dollars? You wouldn't expect injection molded parts instead of uh, ED printed ones, three D three D printed ones. No, I would definitely not expect injection molded parts at, at four hundred bucks because each injection molded part is like how much fifteen thousand, twenty thousand uh, dollars of setup. So we have one, and some of these parts you can't easily do with injection molding. So that's even more for those. Um, so yeah, you're easily talking 
like a 100k in injection molding setup for a machine they're probably making maybe a few hundred per year so yeah <laughs> i i did not expect injection molded parts at all at all let's double check this this side this side correct so couple on this side motor on the left we are good we are good um now i will adjust can i get to these yeah i can still get to these when we put the rail on um, i'm just going to adjust these in one set afterwards just forget what she said no it's what? No, okay, that's a different thread. So, next up we add um, one of the stepper motor plus long rail parts to this carriage. Rotate the eccentric nuts until the gantry slides on rail easily. Okay, so these two, these two right here, these, well, this and this one. Let's put these on the lowest tension setting again so all the way to the outside you can see where the um, the screw thread is actually poking down away from where the where the rail is going to be and these go in here okay still no backlash still quite tight um, even though we are in the um lowest tension setting your threads are backwards what what threads what threads nope Yo, uh, no, no, no caps, please. Like, no, no all caps. No, no yelling. No yelling. Uh-uh. Not, not doing yelling today. So, this is all the way on the motor shaft. All the way on the motor shaft. Yeah, there we go. There's one. And there's two. You thought Nightbot is here? Well, I don't know if Nightbot is here. He isn't. Mm. Two factor. Ah, oh, crap. I don't have my phone with me. Hmm. Nightbot, I mean, we can check. Are these ABS or PLA parts? These are pretty, definitely pretty sure these are um, ABS parts. They feel like they are ABS and um, with the motors mounted them, to them, I wouldn't think they'd be using PLA. So, yeah. Okay, Nightbot is here. So, we should adjust these. Okay, so these up here are loose. That is interesting. And these on the other side, on these are completely tight. And actually, look at this. You can actually see the, um, maybe you can't, but I can. Um, you can actually feel and, and hear the backlash in these or in the, in the linear drive, even though we are using the supposedly anti-backlash nuts. But these over here, these do still have some place, so we get to adjust these. So this side goes in a bit, and that is just to make up for, for tolerances um, in manufacturing. Just, you know, if this hole gets drilled a bit off to the side, it's not going to matter. It's not going to throw off your entire linear system. That's that. That is also good. So let's tighten that down. <laughs> so 
Sniper Free Software? Yes, Nightbot is free software. Um, he is made by Nightdev. They've been around for a while. I'm actually getting black fingers from something. Um, they've been around for a while and basically yeah, provide Nightbot as a free service which I think is awesome. And no, he is not a not a person. <laughs> yeah, he might be able to hear that. Okay, open source? No, he's a service. Literally, it's a web page you um, log on to and he joins your, your channel. Okay, uh, so we've got these two connected, yes, short and the long one. So this is the Z-axis and down here, I guess that's where the, um, the spindle mount is going to go. And this is going to be the X-axis, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So same thing, what are we, what are we doing? Okay. One, two, three. Now, the other part, and this, okay, so the Delrin part right here, this is going to be the, the print bit. Or print bit. Tool, tool what, do, what do you call these? Your work surface, basically. It's interesting that they didn't use MDF for this. But went for Delrin instead. I, I would I would have been okay with just a, a thick, like a one inch MDF part. So, yeah. Um, and as chat is discussing the pros and cons of um, doing injection molding in uh, China, etc., let me just tell you one thing. I have worked with um, on various fronts. Um, I've worked with Far East Supplies. And you, you, you basically, you end up paying the same, um, whether you go for, you know, go for, for local manufacturing and buy parts locally or make parts locally, especially if it's like a machining and, um, or, or injection molding, etc. Whether you buy those parts locally and pay more upfront and get them done well the first time, or whether you you know get them for a discount and then have to rework them and have to go back and forth and spend, put in all the extra time to make the stuff work that wasn't made to your specifications because you know Chinese culture is kind of like that. Yeah, that's good enough. We can we can sell that. Um, it ends up costing you the same. So. Injection molding, you know, whether you do it in your home country or whether you do it uh, in a low-cost country, it's it's not going to be any cheaper. So, <laughs> yeah. What if you own all the tooling? Ah, good point. Printabot is actually doing that or is trying to do that. They are doing injection molding themselves. Pro tip. They have employees. They pay to do that for them. So, in the end, it kind of... Yeah, that you pay for the for the machines for the tooling up front, uh, and then you pay an employee to to make it's it ends up being the same at some point. I skipped a step. What? What did I skip? Ah, the the other end. Okay. Yeah, we we would have figured that out. I keep ah. Okay, so let's let's attach that. Um, Let's not skip steps. That's what I have you guys for, right? Thank you. There we go. Okay. This is starting to turn into quite a massive assembly. This feel I mean it feels good. It feels I like that. I like massive. Especially when it's CNC, <laughs> you, you do need weight. You know, if you're building, or some people who are building CNC um, routers, mills, whatever, from just aluminum profiles, not like your your machine profiles, but your regular um, square tubing, 
They'll just fill those tubes up with sand to give them more weight and, and a lower resonance freq resonant frequency. So anything that adds weight, pretty much a good thing. You're not going to be going at the same speeds as you would with your 3D printer, so yeah. Not going to slow you down. Is this machine open source? Yes, it is. Uh, you can open up the entire source file package on Onshape. Clone it, make your own mods. It's, it's, it's a fairly detailed model too. Okay. Did the missing step. Now on to these parts. Okay, um, we got that coupler goes same side as the nut. So the anti backlash part is back here. This side gets the coupler. I don't think it matters that much. Bad lighting. Why is your top facing down camera so poor quality? Because it's a shit camera. <laughs> That's why. Very, very simple. Very simple. And you are comparing, I mean, you are comparing like the, the deepest of, of, of whites when it comes to live streaming setups. That you're comparing black and white. Apples to oranges. Uh, the most aptly that sounds like I'm, I'm talking about the Apple IT brand. Um, okay, you, you are comparing like some of the best live streaming setups you can have. Like these are DSLM cameras. These are the regular cameras I'm using for my videos. There are 4K Lumix G7s, which I, I run on uh, into a capture card. That's that's like a uh, almost a thousand dollars per camera if you add everything up: lens, camera body, capture card, etc. To each of those perspectives is a is, is a is a thousand bucks one one thousand bucks this thing i think that was like 23 euros so yeah um you, you you do have to put that in perspective this is 23 bucks yep that's a thousand so i mean what you're getting for for your money is still pretty okay but just yeah Machine learning and machine vision could em eliminate employees. Yeah, maybe. Of course. Automation could em eliminate employees, but jobs, jobs, jobs. Uh, nobody wants to get rid of jobs, so we, we stay at, you know, where we were at. Uh, and this is getting political. I don't want to get into that, but yeah. Um, White balance is off. I mean, can't really do much about that. Nope. Get over there. Okay, so this feels a bit looser than the other ones. A bit more, yeah, adjustment. Yep, leeway there. guy around and tighten on the other one so there are two grub screws on each end so there are two back here that grab onto the motor which you can't see because this is a, a really tight corner maybe you can now um, two grub screws on this side one grabs onto the D shaft and the other just supports the back and there are two that grab onto the lead screw as well Yeah, so. Okay, so we do have, oh yeah, this this has quite a lot more backlash. These two down here, these, these feel okay. I can rotate this wheel by hand, so we might need to tighten this up a bit more. But these back here are just all over the place. So first of all, this one isn't tight at all. 
So let's just fix that and give that a quick extra turn. That's the one that is non-adjusting. Wait. Ah, this one. Okay, the, the adjusting one. And that turned out of place. There we go. So that position is okay, a bit further. There, and now I cannot turn it by hand. I'll keep the wrench in here and tighten down the screw to lock it in that position. And now we have a wheel that is nice and tight. And the same on this side back here. Uh, I can't really get you a better perspective of that. Now this one is tight as well, and let's just compare that to what we had before. Um, yeah, there's there's no movement. Um, the only movement that we're getting is because this surface isn't perfectly um, flat. There is there are some burrs left from the from the drilling or machining operation. Let's just say that um, from the machining operation of these parts. So yeah, and the screws are also sticking out. Okay, how straight are these profiles really? Usually these are just extruded aluminum profiles. Usually they're pretty darn straight, at least at this length. Um, straight enough for what you're gonna do with this machine. That's for sure. So we've got this entire thing assembled. Yeah, got it, okay other end for mounting. There is spoiler board, what? Yeah, um, the thing is angle iron, I think that is made differently from how um, Aluminum angles like these are made. These are extruded. I believe in a in a in a somewhat different fashion than uh, that's the wrong bit. In a somewhat different fashion than how you'd extrude. Um, oh, I, I don't have a bit for that crap. In a different fashion than than how you'd extrude uh, angle iron, which I think makes the aluminum a bit. Yeah, straighter, more precise. Iron is, is usually rolled, yeah, but I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I don't know about the, the angled parts. How long is the, the assembly gonna take? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. So if we if you look at how many parts we got done, I mean we got I think we got the, the most finicky. This is heavy. Uh, we got the most finicky parts done. We've got um, this the y axis, the uh, yeah z axis, x axis done. Um, electronics should be fairly easy, mostly plug and play. We do have a few screws left. That's going to be for attaching stuff to the frame and for um, what is going to be used for? I don't know. But I think that the worst part is over. Like from now on out, you, you can you can check out the manual. The manual is online, uh, cnc.com resources. So that's done. That's adjusted. Now we actually get something that's going to start looking like a uh, a CNC frame. I should have mute the mic when I drink stuff. Yeah, the thing is, I, I have no idea how long um, how long the entire software setup, etc., is going to take 
There is, I checked, there is like a half hour long um, instructional video on, you know, how to set up uh, Kirimoto, etc. for this exact mill. But that is just, uh, I think that is too long. I think, you know, the, the information that they're getting across in that time covers like everything from CNC basics to what is feed rate to um, yada yada. I don't I don't want to watch that. I know that already. So I'm not going to have you guys sit through that video because it just doesn't make sense. Um, instead, I will set this up with um, Istelcam, ESTLCam, which is a German made software that is somewhat simpler probably than Kirimoto um, and also not officially like recommended. It's not an official software for this. Uh, mill, but I know it. I've used it before. It's quick to set up. I've got black fingers um, and it creates good G code. So and that's what, what we're going to use. So maybe a bit faster than. It's actually the other one. Maybe a bit faster than, than sitting through that half hour video. At least for me. I missed step 18. Did I? I'm not even at step 18 yet, guys. Come on. Um, thanks for the $10 tip, Bob. <laughs> Love your videos. Uh, always, always good to hear. Right. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. What is my profession besides YouTubing? It is YouTubing. <laughs> it is actually full time YouTubing at this point, but. Um, I am a mechatronics engineer by trade. Is it by trade? It's not a trade. It's a, it's a university degree. Um, so yeah, mechatronics engineer. I've done things all the way from working in, um, in sheet metal. Yeah. Which way does this go? Um, in, you know, producing sheet metal tooling to engineering um automotive electronics and um, project leading those etc etc but at this point it is youtube and 3d printing that is my profession that is tight right now i'm doing step 17 i'm doing i'm, I'm doing step 19 i'm doing step 17 This is the very first part of the assembly. We might be having uh, different manuals, but this feels right. This feels like the I'm, I'm doing the correct step at this point. Um, can you feed material through it as in mill things larger than the bed? Uh, DKTS00 is asking. Um, uh, no, if you look at if you look at the video thumbnail or if you look at uh, CNC labs i believe it is uh if you look at their web page you're going to see that this thing is mostly enclosed so there are side walls left and right this is the back wall here this thing is basically enclosed for the most part there's also a front acrylic panel and all those things combined i don't think will let you feed material through that is larger than the build plate maybe if you if you make a cutout back here you might be able to put or to have something poking out the back but yeah the pie what the fuck are you even asking get real okay next up the slim front plate right there printed aspie 
doing a pretty good job as, as a moderator. Not gonna question that. So I, I did earlier this year, I did take out um, the heating oil tanks uh, of this house, um, which means we now basically have a, an extra, how, how much is it, like 15 square meter room. And of course that that's right now that is filled with 3D printers doing their thing, printing filoween test parts. Um, they've basically been working 24 seven for the last um uh for the last i don't know two weeks or so and yeah that is the, the plan is that's going to be just a separate room where you know milling etc can can happen where 3d printers can work all day um and maybe that's going to be the room for a hang printer i know i've been talking <laughs> yeah uh, I know I've been talking about that just as I say it it comes up in chat I know I've been talking about that for a while I, I, I do want to do it uh, I just need to find the time again you guys keep wanting me to do stuff like ain't it e10 review then yeah other stuff is gonna get pushed back so we have the step 17 that's where we're Attaching Y gantry to frame, so that's the back frame and the front frame plate. That's done. And so far, there is still no alignment that needs to be done here. Okay, side plates. There's there's only really one way this is going to fit together. Let's see. So this goes out of the way for a second, and then we grab these two. So that is the right side, that's the handle up top, and that's the, the slot for the acrylic front. And that's the left side, so this really only fits in one way, like that. Motor connector goes in the cutout, flops through. And we can assemble it. We can screw it off. Socks and am I wearing? I'm 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 not even wearing white socks today. Come on, guys. If you're wondering why I'm not using the the cordless drill for that, um, I somehow lost my six millimeter hex bit, so I I, I literally don't have the bit for this. That's the one bit I've I've been using so much for. Um, for all sorts of things and yeah it just somehow disappeared uh, spoiler board yes you would not want to mill into the Delrin surface that is correct um and that is also something that I'm wondering what there's gonna um, come up here, how they're gonna solve that, if they have a solution for it, or if the Delrin plate is literally gonna be your bottom, uh, the bottom part of your, your print bit. Okay, I shouldn't tighten these anymore. It's already sinking into the MDF. So this is where I kind of... Okay. Um, this is where I get a few question marks, marks popping up in my head. So let me get you that perspective. Now, this is the Z-axis right here, all right? Z. X, that's fine. X-axis is fine. But the thing I'm wondering about here is it's only these two nuts back here. One, two. These two nuts are holding the entire Z-axis straight. So I could rotate this entire thing slightly, tighten it down, and we'd have a scoot or an offset or a crooked, um, whatever you want to call it, a z-axis that isn't perpendicular. Same thing with um, like dynamic forces. If you have something pushing down here, aka dynamic forces from a cutting bit doing its job, only these two screws, and, and of course two more screws on the other side, those are going to be the only thing that holds this thing square 
So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how much. Uh, well, it's not plumb. I could I could tip it up and it wouldn't be plumb. Um, so <laughs> it only matters that it's square. It doesn't matter that it's, that it's plumb. So that's going to be interesting if whether or not that ever shifts. If like you know this gets some knocks if that plops it out of square so yeah we'll we'll see we'll see this is this is starting to look a bit sketchy okay and that plops in here A swarm of automated drones with spools of film and it's scrolled away. What and what? You crazy. No washes here? No, no washes here. Um, Washes would be a good idea, especially against um, soft stuff like MDF. MDF really isn't a hard wood. Technically, it's it's not even a wood. <laughs> it's a wood composite, wood wood engine, whatever it's called. Um, it's a particle board and fiber board. Sorry. And yeah, washes would definitely help here, so that we can tighten this up a bit bit better but then again on the other side we are tightening against plastic so um there's not a whole lot of you know a force we can apply or not a whole lot of, of torque we can apply before we start deforming the plastic there's no provisions for a waste port okay Aluminum special production. The aluminum is probably very standard aluminum. I mean, I don't think there's anything special about these. Okay, that looks that looks good. So Yeah, something something's creaking crocking so i guess that's this side over here yeah it is so definitely not meant to cut with a huge bit something just broke I don't see I don't see what did well it's gonna hold together um, we're gonna get the the rest of the frame on here it's gonna hold up might need to reprint this bracket on in the corner though okay ah uh yeah 3d printed part that that obviously is the weak spot here the mdf is a is a nice big sheet the aluminum is not going to break that's the last thing that's going to break in this part it's going to be the, the 3d printed parts because those those have layers those are plastic right so we've got that assembled and now we drop it onto the rest of the machine cool brackets in the corners no butt joints just the the angle brackets twist on bolts on all corners loosely then tighten on a flat surface on a flat surface what so this surface down here okay okay should only mill b wax hmm. There are two nuts left over. Okay. And there's our Y axis. And it's the same thing, by the way, here. Um, you only have these two nuts and bolts in the front and two more in the back. So theoretically, this in this direction, the weak point isn't this board. 
so much or the uh, or the wheels but it's these two nuts in the back because there, there's going to be a huge lever lever on on these okay so this should theoretically just drop on like that maybe one is this is this go on the on the inside yeah feels like it okay so we now have a box it's, it feels a bit tight it feels like it's eh, not meant to be this tight but let's see if these fit the thickness of the aluminum should i measure the thickness of the aluminum oh and these are threaded cool so we can in theory just plop in yep these m8 screws and are these screws yeah they're screws they're not bolts there we go and it, it's gonna fall into position nice fdm or sla depends on what you're doing don't like german cars Yeah, the thing, so, so for context, uh, the discussion on durability or long-term durability and resistance of 3D printed parts, um, yeah, highly depends on the material, I'd say. So SLA versus FDM is going to have a, a huge difference in just what the, what the material, what the finished print is going to be able to take as far as UV and chemicals go um, but also if you're just printing FDM there's a huge difference in just the fine details of what materials you use like I've had an ABS part outside in direct sunlight for a while and it's uh... <laughs> okay, that that didn't speak correct um, I've had a, a, an ABS part in the in the direct sunlight uh for a while and it looks it looks good like new because i use black abs and that just absorbs any uv uh thank you for the 15 euro tip closes my new hex key set yeah I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna get some some hex bits from that uh i do have the hex keys but i need the bits for the cordless drill to make this faster do you guys like the the text to speech it's like the, the streamer standard that you have now. Is the stream broken? No, it's not. Aluminum thickness, ah, uh, that is... Quarter inch? Qu quarter, no, eight, eighth? Quarter? Quarter inch. I'd say this quarter inch. Looks a bit thicker than, than six millimeters. I don't have my calipers here right now, so I'm... Uh, just gonna use some uh, non-precision parts. Ah, six millimeters. Six millimeters is exactly. You think most people are actually cars? What? What type of router trimmer am I going to use? Yes, the Makita RTRC RT0700C. That's the I think that's the European model. They also have the RT0701C. That's the US model, I believe. And the difference, from what I know, is the uh, the US Makita routers come with uh, quarter inch. So 6.3 something uh, millimeter.
collets, so you're going to be chucking up your, your quarter inch uh, router bits into those, while the uh, European versions come with six and eight millimeter collets. So what I'm actually going to be doing is I do have these, um, these, are, these are literally all the, um, the bits I have for now. So let's just go on a, a quick uh, detour here. So zip. These are all the milling bits I have. Um, I have been using these blurry bits in my, uh, well, milling machine, which is just a glorified drill press. So that's a two millimeter one, I believe, four flute, even that, that might not be the ideal one. That's a four millimeter, four flute. That's a three flute, six millimeter one. Four flute, six millimeter, and five millimeter, yes, four flute. So not the ideal bits for this type of router, but that's all I have. I'm thinking the um, the two millimeter one, that's the one I'm going to get the most use out of with this one. But in the long run, I do want to switch to eight inch um, bits, just because they are the cheapest stuff you can get. Eighth inch, eighth inch shank, uh, these are six millimeter shank ones shaft shank whatever the word is um and the eighth inch ones are just a lot cheaper and you can get an adapter from quarter inch to eighth inch um, or from six millimeters to eighth inch you just drop that into the six millimeter or quarter inch call it and you're good to go because you, you could get a different collet for these Makita routers, but the thing is, to get an 8 inch one, uh, you have to get like the custom made boutique type ones, which are like more than 40 bucks for the collet, which is almost half as much as the router costs, and I'm, 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 not, I'm not paying that for a collet. Yeah. Um. Ooh, AliExpress affiliate links. Interesting. Nice Saturday show. Nice Saturday show. <laughs> Thank you. Hoping, hoping that's enjoyable. Guys discussing the degrees. Ah, CNC bits. Yeah, I have I have all the cheapo um you know all the cheapo uh AliExpress special eighth inch bits. So like a buck per piece, which I find decent, tolerable. If you break one, it's okay. They they don't last forever. You don't expect them to last forever with these cheap uh, or weak CNC setups. They're okay. They they cut they cut okay. Um, but obviously they're not the greatest thing ever. Don't buy calls from China. Well, you don't really have an option. That's the thing. If you buy these Makita routers or even the, the rigid or whatever others you can buy, there's no real option of, of just buying a quality eighth inch collet. I would, but again, the one option I have is 40 bucks and that's just, that's just not worth it. Darby Cox, who are you asking that? Do, do you think you will ever move to the US? Hmm. Uh, PX Caution is asking, the original planned router Rigid 5.5 is really cheap, 99 bucks at Home Depot. Uh, is there a cheap European alternative? Uh, yeah, the Makita one, the Makita. I paid f 105 bucks for that, which I think is, is not super cheap, but it's reasonable for Makita. At least for um, for here in Europe, that's no, that's not a bad price for a Makita tool of this um, 
Kelber. Okay, not not perfect, not perfectly true, but <clears throat> right. Yep, one in five, and and that's well on Amazon you pay like one forty, but you can get them on, on all sorts of of uh, shops. So, all right, let's see. Twist bolts on all corners loosely and tighten on flat surface. We did that. Okay, so next up, router mount, and then we add a row, a router. So I guess it's a Makita unboxing time, and the front shield is um, optional, I assume. So for now, I'm just going to be using my shop vac for um, dust collection. Don't have any other ways of doing that, um, or just nothing at all because you know the router plus um, the vacuum. That's just going to be really, really noisy. I will definitely put in hearing protection for that. We use the long and the short screws with these. I guess the. Long ones? I'm gonna use the long ones. M815. Short ones. Okay. So, this way or the other way? This way. Okay, with the screw holes facing down. Yeah, there is no provision for it for dust collection in here. This is just a very, very basic setup. There's not even a, a you know, a base. So this thing is completely open on the bottom. So I guess what you could do is you could just put it on like a, a, a hex honeycomb mesh something and just suck out all the dust through the bottom and just don't have it leave the machine at all. That would probably work pretty well, actually. So that might be an option, but there is no like direct dust collection that uh, attaches to the call or the, the, the router mount or something. Are there even end stops? Uh, no, no, there are no end stops. But then again, you don't really use end stops on a CNC machine. You use them on a 3D printer, but on a CNC setup like this, you usually align your um, yeah, you align your axes with, or your zero positions with the part, and basically touch your router bit on the part. So, come on, so that you always get the the correct zero positions there. Why does this one not bite? Now it does. It looks like it feels like it's biting, but it's not. The thing would tear itself apart if you try to mill metal. Well, I will, in fact, I will try to mill aluminum. Maybe not today, but I will definitely throw some aluminum at this guy and just see what's gonna happen. Um, just for reference, I have milled aluminum successfully with um, the Mendel Max, which is even less of a CNC capable design than this. It's a f much flimsier design, and the, the, the aluminum parts don't look half bad. Of course, like I was, I was doing some some tricky stuff with uh, trochoidal milling, etc. But in the end, the Mendelmex did mill aluminum, and it didn't. It did not look bad. This is horrible to tighten. Uh, someone was asking about some Bosch stuff. usually use limit switches to not break your machine yeah uh, yeah I just I mean a uh, 400 bucks plus the router
maybe you just have to use a bit of common sense. It's not a production machine. It's not a, you know, it's not a professional machine. You just, you are expected to put a bit of thought into it. Because yeah, of course, if you let it, it's going to break itself. Bosch Blue is their top line. Um, yes, sort of. Bosch has a few different lines. Green is like the the everyday, you know, household consumer stuff. Um, a lot of the products are identical to the blue stuff, um, but the blue also have a few different lines. They have the, the cheaper tools and the more expensive ones. You can buy like the same uh, the same skill saw for two hundred bucks as a blue Bosch. Or you can buy the same size saw as a you know 600 euro saw so big difference there just because it's blue doesn't mean it's good um next up me catching up with chat 50 cents per end stop yes right i know it's actually less it's like 32 cents dollar cents um Right, we are adding a uh, a router. So Makita unboxing time it is. Uh, Crespin, yes, the the Cres ones usually come up too, but the thing is, from from what I'm hearing, is they are incredibly noisy. Um, and. I think they're also a bit larger than um, what we have here with this somewhat small one-handed router. I think the Decress ones are a good bit larger and heavier. This is literally a, a one-handed tool. So, I don't know, how much, how much does this thing weigh? Maybe one and a half kilos? Three pounds? So, you, I don't think you can really compare this. So there's your, your handheld, um, what are these called, plate to use it with, depth adjustment, etc. We're not going to use that. Wider than a router, okay. And, oh, look at that. Is that dust collection? Do I see some, some dust collection uh, provisioning right there? The problem is that attaches to, yeah, okay. That's, that, that's not going to work. This attaches to the. Uh, uh, to your your holder basically, and it clips in somewhere around there. So that's not going to work for our job, unfortunately. Thankfully, we we do have three D printers, so we can make some custom dust collection collets or throats if you want to. So there's your parallel guide. I'm not going to use that. That goes back in the, into the box. The nice thing is if I ever get dissatisfied with this with this setup, if I'm ever like, uh, I don't know, I'm not using it that much. I still have a, a Makita router that is a, a nice one-handed uh, trim router. So yeah. What else? So there is another collet. I think that is the eight millimeter one. Let's get out here. So let's just grab a six millimeter in mill. That's a used one. That's six and eight. That is not working. So eight millimeter collet. Uh, I don't have. I actually, I actually do have an eight millimeter um, end mill, but yeah, that, this is not it. So by default, I'm hoping this is a six millimeter. Yes, it is. So get a small wrench and a large wrench. There we go, and this tightens down, and now we have a nicely chucked up uh, six millimeter end mill bit. Perfect, that works well. 
And I don't really know how true this thing runs, but then again, I, I don't really care about how true this thing runs. Um, only 3k RPM? What? Thir that you're missing, you're missing a zero. This is a 30,000 RPM. So, yeah, and it's adjustable. So there are, I, I don't know which, which one I, I, I managed to get here, but um, there's your table. So there are like six different uh, RPM settings on this machine, on, on this, um, what language is that? Uh, on this router, so you can go from 10,000 RPM all the way up to 30,000 RPM. So even smaller milling bits should work pretty well. All right, that's that, that's chucked up. I don't know if we should be doing the first cut with a six millimeter end mill, but I will take that out for now because these things are sharp, obviously, and I don't want to cut my hand open. There we go. Internal air cooling, yes, I'm hoping that is yes that seems to no that seems to be sucking up or hold on it's turning this way then it's blowing down okay so this thing is going to be blowing over your um workpiece so it is blowing down which i mean makes sense you wouldn't want to suck up all the dust into oh we have a spindle stop right here you wouldn't want to suck all the, the dust up into the motor so yeah Looking good, follower call it, small one. Not going to use it. Mm. Thanks for the $5 tip, Trevor. Much appreciated. Also, focus, yes. Focus, there. Cool. This, there. Let's see if you're gonna need the, um, this extra shim that's in here. Let's try with and then without. So, nope, don't need that, doesn't fit. Without. Fits, but just barely. Like right up here. I'm running out of camera angles because this is a box that kind of blocks everything. Right up here, it's pretty tight um, with the aluminum profile. Once we clamp this up, there's like two millimeters right there. But yeah, I think I'm just going to make this flush with the bottom, which it is, to have as little of a lever as possible. And this should, how far does this come down? Far enough. Okay, so router as high up as possible. And um, right. Two more screws, two more nuts, and the router is in. Cable to the left or to the right, shouldn't matter. How do you hold anything to the bed? I don't know, to be honest. Um, boom, 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 350k, yeah, P-speed railing. Cool. Would it be possible to cut a hole in the back and feed material through it? Yes, definitely possible. Arduino is the next step. What? How large is the? <laughs> it's it's interesting how uh, terms get mixed up here. How large is the build area of uh, this mill? First of all, it's not a, a build or build volume, I think was, was the wording. First of all, it's not a build volume because you're not building anything, you're, you're machining stuff. Um, you're taking away material and the volumes most of, most of the time for a CNC setup doesn't matter that much because you only have so far that a mill bit will go into the material before like, your router or your, your, your mechanics get caught on something. So the most important thing on any sort of a 
at least on a 3D mill that has three axes and not axes and not four or five, is going to be your build surface. And I don't know, someone in chat is going to bring that up. Someone's going to po uh, copy paste the uh, exact dimensions. Will it be adding liquid lubricant? As in a coolant no i will not because this thing is uh, built from wood so mm -mm. well okay so someone's asking does the um mill head pass this plastic part right here so let's just visualize this um because right here there is only like a, a two millimeter gap and this is overhanging you can see it from the from the top this part right here is overhanging but the thing is um this entire thing actually moves as a unit the this moves up and down on this black plate so the wheels are here they they ride on the on this uh, aluminum profile so this entire thing including the motor just moves up and down so this is one unit mount on here motor up here and the black bracket moves up and down and these wheels and this plate is the only thing that is fixed in height how many kilowatts a few enough i think it's it's 700 watts or something enough it's it's plenty this thing has plenty of power definitely more than enough 20 to 1 i don't want to get a um like a shock when i first plug this in okay this uh adapter we're not using this back into the box with you okay router is installed front plate mm, not sure i want to install this yet because it's just gonna well i guess we can drop it in yeah that, that would that would actually be really easy just to um just to like because this is just a slot right here just to drill a few holes insert some leds and just have this thing light up that would be sweet and you could do it like just from the side right here that would be nice i think we're going to be doing that uh will this spin be speed controlled by the arduino no you set it to a fixed speed on the speed on the style right here you set it to a fixed speed you start your cutting job and it's going to stay at that speed for the entire cutting job which is fine because you're only going to be cutting one material combining the arduino and the cnc shield okay this is going to be hard okay and some electronics let's see what kind of plastic did they print uh abs yeah it's horrible print quality but it doesn't matter as long as it's strong enough i already cracked one part i think so arduino standard pinning plop i don't so I don't think there's anything on this Arduino yet, so we, we will need to uh, flash it ourselves. Let's see what the manual is telling us. Jumpers, two. Okay, wow, which which one? So the, the ones, the two jumpers closest to the uh, blue screw clamp, clamp. Okay. So, one, two, so that's just micro-stepping and having two jumpers on, I think is eight times micro-stepping, might be four times. Uh, I'm not quite sure about that because I never change it on my 3D printers. 3D printers always run in 16 times micro-stepping all three jumpers in. Does it have a table on here? No. 
So, yeah, two jumpers, either four or eight times micro-stepping, I think. So, EC. I don't know why, why they why they have to give these parts part numbers that are cryptic. Because that they call it EC. So, EC is... It, I, I don't know what it stands for, but it's motor cables, it's motor wires. Um, and yeah, just call them. I mean, if it's if it's a stepper motor cable, just call it that. Just give it the name stepper motor cable. <laughs> People are going to know what you're talking about. Um, because these have no markings on them whatsoever. So yeah. Board is touching the USB. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. There is solder resist on this. Um, it's not going to... Uh, short anything out so these have a four pin and a six pin end yes they do and these go on the connectors like so okay technically a bit of the wrong connector practically practically it's gonna work By the way, if you want to reproduce something like this, the parts for these, uh, again, as some people in chat have been pointing out, um, you might already have if you've ever built a 3D printer or if you've ever disassembled a 3D printer, then you're definitely going to have all the parts. And things like the Arduino and the um, CNC shield, that is CNC, not uh, S-I-E-N-C-I shield, the CNC shield is um, like one or two bucks for this thing. The Arduino is like five bucks or so. So in total, if you yeah, add the stepper drivers, etc., the electronics plus motors are, are going to be less than 50 bucks. And then, of course, uh, the wheels, the profiles, etc., etc. But, you know, depending on how you build it, if you want to build it yourself, you could have yourself a, a nice, simple, easy, uh, and cheap build as well. Or if you want to use any of the any of these parts for other things, uh, you can definitely do that. So, is there any position where I don't short anything out? Probably not. Now, I'm not a huge fan of these uh, little tiny heat sinks because usually they they don't do much. They do more harm than they do good. Uh, you should be putting them on the bottom, but on the bottom there's no space. These are thermal wires. Um, I don't think they do all that much on top there, so yeah. Don't forget to set the driver to 0.8. Let's see what the manual says. So these come preset at the center position of the potentiometer. Um, again, you, you can't really set the um, these stepper drivers to a fixed voltage. You, you can't really do that because they have different sensor resistors. Um, some drivers have, uh, well, some driver types have different reference voltage ranges that are core or correspond to different currents. So you can't just set your drivers to um, 0.8 volts and, and have that as a universal configuration. So potentiometer goes towards the um, jumpers. So one, two, three. Three. Three, maybe not. Okay, what's up? Why are you not going in? Oh, because this. Okay, the connector, this white mismatch connector right here is in the way. And that's, that looks like it's in. 
Okay, can this do steel? No. Most likely not. Um, maybe with a tiny bit, maybe with the right cutting strategies, maybe going really slow, but no, nah, not, not really. It's not meant for steel. It might cut aluminum decently, but it's not going to cut steel decently. Right, done. Ah, the severed rudder should be tuned using the potentiometer on the front so that the flat edge of the dial faces to the left. This gives the stepper motor on the middle one the right amount of power to run effectively. Further tuning is required to inflate either counterclockwise or clockwise. Well, okay. While the board is powered up, well, I, I've been doing things wrong all these years. So we need a tiny uh, screwdriver for these. Do I have one that fits? I I know I had one. I've, it's been a while since I've last um, had to adjust these uh, stepper drivers. I did have a tiny one that fit almost perfectly. Let's hope Audi doesn't cut out. I'm not going to grab the multimeter. I think this one fit almost perfectly. Uh, printer still seems to be running. That's printing matter hackers PLA at the moment. So I think this cheapo screwdriver fits almost perfectly. So they're telling us to turn it clockwise until the flat faces 90 degrees the other way. Missed pins? What? Check stepper pins? What? 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 Uh, pins not in? Pins not in? What? What are you guys saying? Stepper pins not in what? This one? This one right here? Oh! The one next to it. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Well, that's uh, quality components. Again, these st these these CNC boards, they're pennies. So I guess it's no surprise that uh, they don't align perfectly on uh, the first try. So that's I think that's better. Slightly. <laughs> for an age for that build does not look suitable. I would agree, definitely. So Yeah. Um Right. Yeah, just in case you're wondering why you're getting banned in chat, uh, no, yeah, subscribe to my channel, I'd really appreciate it, check it out, like, I'm, I don't come to your channel and spam, so you don't come to mine and spam. Um, by the way, mods, mods should have the report for spam button that is gonna, you know, potentially get you blocked across YouTube, so don't, don't do that crap. Um, right, let's see. So, ah, adjust these, okay. Yeah. Why did I plug these in? So we turn these 90 degrees. There we go. And this one as well. Cool. Cool, got that. PEH. Ah, so the PEH. Again, why why those names um, ah that actually has a ha nice um, actually has a cover that clicks into place so this entire thing slides in 
It's almost like a... Ooh, and then you snap the wires into place. X, Y, Z from the, from the back. Let's try that. That sounds like fun. So this thing plops in like that. We've got the cutouts in the back for the USB and not, not for power. Wait, wait up. are we not going to feed this thing power? There we go. Does it run off of USB? Oh, wait. Ah, okay, so, so we get this. That is interesting. Okay, so we get a separate power connector. Um, I have a feeling like the the barrel jack that is hidden right underneath here that uh, the Arduino comes with, that would have been sufficient to run a few step drivers because the pins are broken out. The pins go up to this board. Um, I'm not sure if they're connected on this board, but okay. Okay, and that's a 3D printed thread, by the way, that we're, we're trying to screw into here. And it feels like it's catching. Yeah, but it is very tight. Power from blue connector, yes, that is, yeah. This open-ended connector is going to get wired to the blue one. So, but for now, um, let's wire this out and route this out as intended. So this is X. Um, I, by the way, as because it, it plops into my head right now, I do have that text-to-speech enabled on, on uh, Streamlabs tips now. I don't think I, I, I caught uh, any responses there. Is that something I should keep on? I think it's kind of it's kind of neat, but is it is it annoying or is it something uh, you would like to see kept on? No, the, the, the voice output. Do, do you even hear that? I think you should. I think I tried. I made sure you you'd hear that. And I feel like it validates me as a streamer because that's it, all the streamers have that. <laughs> so, let's double check. That is screwed in. We get that connected right here. Positive over here, negative over here. Barely audible? Okay. Barely audible. Um, give, give, give me a second. Give me a second. Uh, I can I can crank that up. It might be a bit too loud the next time though. Uh, just be warned. Mm -hmm. I tried to do that for um, super chat as well, but it super chat is like yeah kind of buggy at times and and doesn't work too well with um with streamlabs so right so this guy gets just tightened into this blue connector right here I wish I just had like an, an overhead controllable zoomable camera, kind of like a Twitch Plays Pokemon style thing uh, where people can control their the cameras they want to see and the um, yeah, and maybe even control the camera. I could stream like all the cameras individually, but well. I guess I could. I'd have to run three instances of OBS Studio. Maybe, maybe I'll try that at some point. Okay, so that is wired in right there. That is literally just a barrel jack that goes to the blue connector right there. 
Um, let me actually replay the um, the last super chat that was supposed to be read out. Let's see. Replay. So I do have it playing on the uh, on the TV right here. But did you guys hear that? I don't know. Sound is fine. <laughs> okay, box is assembled. Let's see what's next here. <laughs> Second test. Yeah. Sound test. <laughs> Barely audible works very low. Very low. Very, very low. We can we can boost it. And we can crank it up to I don't know, five decibels more. Alright, but thanks for that. <laughs> Very low. It it would suck if that's only like being picked up from those speakers and then back, but uh not from the stream. Crap. I'll have to look into that. Alright, uh So we wire this up. Where did the electronics go so there's a cover that goes on these that snaps on like that that just um it's clicked on and there's like a another connection down here that keeps everything neatly in place i like that and ah okay so this is just like a a clamp you slide onto the frame and it stays in place Sputnika, thanks for the four, five, RS, what is, what is, what is that? R dollars. Thanks for the tip. Anyways. Cool. My hotkeys are not global anymore. Eh. And I don't see where my mouse is. Brazilian. Ooh. One, two, three, test, test, test. So if that was really low again i do have it on the speaker you should hear it somewhat clearly directly pumped into stream let me just check what my audio audio output is doing here it should be picked up One, two, but three, test, test, test. oh yeah it, it is really low i'm i'm seeing that it is being picked up correctly but it is it is low okay With an echo, yeah. The, the echo, the echo is where. Um, so again, I, I gave it a bit more. One, two, three. Test, test, test. test, test, test. That should be that should be a bit louder. I'm hoping. But yeah. Um, anyways, thanks thanks for the tip. <laughs> uh, cool. That goes here. There, that's better. Cool. More. I, I, I actually, I actually don't have any more volume that I can give it. I could lower my uh, voice, my vocal volume, but uh, then the entire stream would be more sound. My mic is picking up. I know it is because I need. I, I want to hear it too. Um, okay. What am I doing? I'm trying to wire this stuff up. So X, Y, Z. So in order, the top one is X. That is this one. We have Y. That is the one on the bottom here. No wire management. Just none. Nothing. Absolutely no wire management, which is okay since all you have is the power cord for the router. Um, for the, well, trim router. You have three stepper Oh, there we go. Three stepper cables, drivers, and that's it. 
It's okay now. It's okay now. <laughs> oh, thanks for letting me know. <laughs> and thanks for the five year tip. I don't know how well the spam filter works on those, though. Um, I'm just relying on, on uh, stream tip or stream labs to be reasonable. Uh, there's no there's no extra layer like, like nightbot on that, so <laughs> don't don't be naughty, please. Uh, mute desktop audio so we can only hear it through mic. That's that's too silent. You're not gonna hear that. Right. Oh, some, something's resonating in here. Oh, it's continuously on its steady speed. Yes. Uh, that looks like we are now fully assembled. Don't plug in your power brick yet. Simply connect the USB cable to computer and continue on to the next step. Open your favorite resources tab. Click on the software resources. Software resources. 1.1v with default settings for the um, CNC mill one. OK, 